Here we're representing every blade of grass as a piece of geometry that's generated by our tessellation engine. Uh, as you move in and out, of, uh, move towards the grass and away from other grass, the engine automatically changes the level of detail, the quality level of the grass, and it's seamless. You don't see any popping or uh, any of the sort of effects you would normally see. But if Joe over here can lock the camera adaptive level and move back out, you can see uh, instead of filling in, yeah, keep, keep pulling out. Um, instead of filling in all the grass since we locked it, this is essentially static from the viewpoint he was at when he first locked it. Uh, so unlock and then lock it again. Now if we zoom into the grass after it's been locked in, you can see the detail level um, of the blades uh, is, is relatively low. Yeah, you can see the curves aren't really nice, there's tessellation artifacts, but if we, we allow the adaptive level to work, C, wrong button, C, the, the curves at the top over here are perfect with the anti-aliasing and everything because it's actually geometry that's being generated on the fly. Uh, we have millions of blades of glass. The grass, if you turn off the floor, you can see how dense it is. In a, in a normal game, you generally have to texture map some sort of terrain texture to, to fill in uh, the detail. But we have so much over here that it's unnecessary to, to do so. Turn it back on. The other nice feature of this, since we actually have geometry for each blade of grass, it can interact with other geometry in the scene. So, we can throw these boxes around, which are being simulated right now with PhysX, and it interacts seamlessly with it, leaving depressions in the grass. Um, we can also do other nice procedural effects. We can add wind to the grass. And each blade of grass is essentially different. Um, right now they look somewhat homogenous, but if you look closely, it's not one texture that's repeated. And they, can, they can bend and whatnot. Maybe not, they're rigid here. Uh, along with some other rigid bodies being mixed with fluids. Um, they're interacting with each other. You can see there's buoyancy. Um, the, the objects are floating based on what their relative density is. And we can actually move the objects around and that affects the water. Having this two-way kind of interaction is something uh, previously unheard of. Uh, the, the way that this is possible is by representing everything as, as the same. Everything is represented as a set of particles. So let me switch to particle view. Uh, yeah, E. We'll try it. E and B. Sorry. E and B. B. Press the E. There you go. Um, the whole world is essentially made up of these uniform, uniformly sized little particles. Um, and then every particle has constraints on it. So for the rigid bodies, the constraints are that they have to keep their shape. Uh, for, for the fluids, the constraints um, follow the, the rules of fluid dynamics. But everything is simulated with each other as one big pile of particles. Uh, allowing us to do all of this phenomenon at the same time. Uh, so, this is really exciting stuff. Um, we'll be seeing it in some games moving forward. What we've added recently is viscosity. So it's a new kind of constraint uh, that uh, we previous, previously didn't have for our fluids. We've got our beloved bunny over here, and we're going to we're going to cover him with some stuff. You can see the fluid uh, behaves viscous, which means it's sort of sticky-like, where the fluid molecules want to stick to each other. And we can increase the amount of viscosity. So let's go, I believe that was the low. You can see what it looks like medium, and it becomes more foamy feeling. And 
and that's a very high viscous type of fluid. Uh, I think people can imagine all kinds of uses for this in various games. Uh, let's, let's show the natural extension to this, which is the heat run. So previously when we threw liquids against objects, uh, they would just kind of run off. Now, now we could actually have it stick to the walls. So we've got ectoplasm over here. We can do a proper Ghostbusters game. We can show the particle view again. You can see it's all the same stuff. Let me switch back. And in a real game, you might want to use it on some sort of character. Show the goo gun. <laughs> <laughs> and show the video everybody's one. What is it? 